how do you feel with your team? You come out of you know, obviously successful for the most part the exhibition game against Fort Worth, and now now it's week of, and you open with, I mean, just a monster game against Georgia State. Yeah, it, it's continued growth, right? You know, it's early, it's November. Um, we've never really been great in November, but we haven't returned this many um, experience to guys. Um, and, and, you know, we haven't changed very much with what we do. Um, so hopefully we can get off to a good start this year. Um, you know, schedule's as tough as it's ever been. So uh, we'll see what happens. I don't know that the record always tells how well or how you're progressing as a program. Um, but we're, we're excited about it, and we think we're in a good spot right now. If you go back to last year, the Georgia State game is one that certainly sticks out, and you think about, okay, well, what, what might it shake it out like if that goes the other way? How does that inform your impression or your feeling about this game, both in terms of the preparation for it and also what you might feel depending on how it goes on Friday night? Um, you know, I think it's a big game for both teams. You know, you, you don't know what you're playing for until the end of the year. And so you always got to treat every game um, like it matters, right? And we, we didn't know when we were playing them that we were playing an NCAA tournament team. And, and so when that game got away from us, we looked back at CD and go, wow, you know, that would played a different, a, a major impact on our seeding with that win. That would have been the one team in the pool that we would have had a win against. But. You, you, you can't really look into it that far down the road, but you just want to take advantage of any opportunity you have against good teams, especially at home. They played a night against Eastern Tennessee State University. Is that an advantage for them, an advantage for you? Does it matter at all? I, I think we both return enough um, that there's not going to be a dramatic change to the roster, to the scout, to the preparation. Um, you know, maybe there's an advantage to us. We get to see them play. They don't get to see us. Um, but getting a game under your belt um, is, is always huge, too. You know, and, and sometimes you go out with the jitters, the nerves, and you never know what happens, and you get off the slow starts. And so um, you can look at it both ways. I, I just think that, you know, playing on the first night is always a big deal. Um, for us, we needed the time. We, we had some guys banged up or whatnot. So I think it's working out for us in the better. Does this? Right now, this November feel different than November's before it because you guys have so much returning and so many guys that know what you expect? Uh, yes and no. I mean, in terms of how we've introduced offense, defense, and those types of things, yes, because it's been more follow the leader. So all the new guys, th there hasn't been a sense of urgency for all of them to pick up everything right now as we go because we don't need one of those guys to play 25, 30 minutes a game. We've always been in that situation until this year. Um, and, and so I think that's what's different for the most part. Have you have you figured out exactly what your rotation is going to be, in, at least in the early, like a top seven deal, and who's going to be that fifth starter? No, um, I mean we got an idea probably who will start, but but that all has to do with how we practice the next two days. You know, is, is Jamar ready to go? Um, we've had a couple other guys that have had some knickknacks here and there that have been in and out that I'm not sure I can 100% rely on. And, and so we've got two, three guys right now I'm just not sure of, which forces me to prepare 10 guys to play. Uh, but in, in a perfect world, we'd cut that rotation to eight and go. You return, obviously, everybody but one. Georgia State is returning several starters, if not four or five. Yeah. Uh, what What's the matchup look like to you in this game, knowing this opponent pretty well? Similar. I, I think we're very similar in regard of the personnel. Um, We've, we've got a lineup where we could go, you know, four perimeter players with a big inside. We could go five perimeter players. Um, I think the one thing that we, we probably have a little more depth in size, and so we could probably go double low. I'm not sure that they're willing to do that. I think they've got the size, but I'm not sure that that's their style. But I think we're very similar in terms of personnel. Um, we both have, you know, guards that. Uh, I expect to play professionally in the future, and, and our, I think we both have two preseason all-conference MVPs. Um, and, and, and so there's a lot of similarities between the two teams, which makes this game fun to look forward to. How did this game come about? I mean, what's the logistics like when you go to schedule a home-and-home -home like you guys have with these guys? <laughs> I think they run in the same issues we run into. Right. It's just hard to get people to come play you. And um, they had an assistant a while back that I, that I had known for a while. 
a couple of years ago, then they moved on to an ACC school. We had talked about playing once before, and it just didn't really come together. When we, were, we actually were going to play, we wanted to play our way to the uh, Virgin Islands, uh, just to shorten the trip, and it never really came together. And so a couple summers ago, they're late in the year, looking for a game, just like us, and the schedule fit, the dates fit perfectly, us coming out of the UCLA game. And so we knew it would be a tough one for us, but it was worth getting the home game on the back end. Um, so it was kind of one of those where neither one of us wanted to go to play at the other person's place, but we both need a home game, so let's take it. Is there an added advantage for when you're playing a team from Georgia that they're coming to Missoula, Montana, of all places, and a lot of these guys, I mean, they, you know, it's going to be a very foreign sort of environment yeah. to them to be here. Is that does that play into it at all? Uh, I, I think the travel could be maybe a little tougher. Um, you know, I, I think pretty much everywhere they go, they probably either bus or direct flight out of Atlanta. Um, and so connecting through Salt Lake or Denver, that, that could be a little different, but I don't know that it's harder. You know, normally I'd say, you know, we, we got some snow today and, and, and maybe that throws them off a little bit, but we had snow when we played there last year. So, um, you know, I, I think these guys are just going to be early enough in the season where the travel is not a big deal. Um, maybe the environment, you know, hopefully if we, we get our typical Montana crowd, that could be something that, that they're not accustomed to. Does Georgia State remind you of anybody in the Big Sky Conference? No, really. I mean, they're a lot different. You know, personnel may be similar to, to Portland State last year's mm. personnel, um, but their style of play is completely different. They, you know, 40 minutes of a matchup zone and then a lot of ball screens. Um, I'd say offensively, maybe similar to Northern Colorado. Uh, and then defensively, probably similar to Idaho State three years ago when they were playing the 1 1 3. What do you anticipate being the biggest difference from last year to this year in terms of your team, just the way that you're going to play? It, it, it seems like it wouldn't necessarily be that significant, but you lose a big piece, especially defensively in Fab, and so I'm just wondering how big a shift you're expecting to see in terms of what you do. Uh, I, I think we've got room to grow defensively. You know, we, we lost our, our defensive quarterback, and, and I think Jamar's done a decent job of assuming that role. Um, but when he hasn't been in, it hasn't been the same. And so that, that's an area of improvement for us. Uh, I think offensively, we've, we've, we've grown in terms of our versatility and our ability to space the floor uh, with Saeed in that slot or Donovan in that slot. Um, but, you know, I don't know that that's neither better or worse uh, on either side, just a little different. Jamar certainly to the to the naked eye looks like he's leaned out quite a bit yeah. and and in practice is, is maybe moving a little bit quicker than what he did yeah. last year, which got him in trouble at times. We're a little late to screens, catch fouls, and things like that. Is that something that you've noticed that you emphasize and that you expect to pay dividends here? No, that that was one of our focuses. You know, we, we Brandon Ronan's done a phenomenal job for us in the weight room, I and mean, he was appointed was that we wanted our strength and conditioning individualized. Each kid needed something different. And he's done a phenomenal job. I think him and, and Donovan both were two guys that we want to lean out and maximize their, their athleticism as much as possible. Donnie's been a little tougher just because he's been in and out. Um, but he is leaner than, than he was. But, but Jamar has, has shed some weight and, and his mobility has increased. And so I think his ability to guard away from the basket is a lot better. And hopefully we'll see him more active in the ball screens. Watching the NBA this time of year, the first couple of weeks, you always see a couple of breakout guys who you can tell really worked hard. I mean, Jamal Murray last night yeah. scoring 50. You could tell he worked on his game. Is yeah. there anybody like that in your program that's going to maybe surprise people with their level of production early because of their improvements? I, I think Ahmad mentally, to be honest mm -hmm. with you, mm has -hmm. improved as much as anyone on our team um, on both sides of the ball. You know, he's playing the game a lot more physical. He's tuned in defensively. Offensively, I think his ability to deliver and create for others is, is, is improved. Um, and so I think that he's, he's moved more into the pure point guard role as opposed to the combo guard that he once was. Timmy Paul has put on weight, so he's going to be stronger and faster, and, and I think he'll shoot the ball well, although he shot for percentage last year. Um, you know, and Jamar physically, you'll see a difference just in his body and his mobility. But uh, Amon's probably made the biggest jump at this point, positive or negative. And, and sometimes humility isn't something we're always prepared for. And, um, you know, I, I think that the feedback was, was honest, uh, it was on point, and then the question was going to be, what did he do with it? Was he going to make adjustments or was he going to attempt to prove um, 
that he could be someone else. And I, I think he went and made all the necessary adjustments, and, and we're seeing a, a new Amar Rory right now. You guys had such good roster balance and such good chemistry last year. No, You don't lose much, but some guys are going to be in some different roles. How do you make it meld like it did so well a year ago? You just keep plugging away, man. It, it, it's never a finished product until your last game. And, and so you got to make adjustments. And what I see in a guy might change or it might be different two weeks from now. Um, I try to keep people in, in similar roles to the year before because when you make drastic changes, if it doesn't work, they lose confidence. And so you, you try to evolve as a team throughout the course of the year. And we started that evolution with a couple of guys um, in the summer. Um, but for the most part, we're just trying to just play your strengths, do what you do, and, and uh, play as hard as you can and compete on both sides of the ball and see what happens. Well, last year you guys had this defined single, single senior, single leader. I know everybody has it different leadership roles, but they were all playing for one guy. Now with four seniors, how do you hope that kind of disperses itself? Um, you know, we, we've kind of gone away from the, the old-fashioned voting, picking captains, mm -hmm. selecting captains. It's, it's kind of, let's just see what happens, you know. And sometimes the guy with the strongest voice, the guy with the, with the, with the strongest habits becomes your leader. And, and maybe it's not a senior, maybe it's a junior or sophomore, right? And so we'll see what happens. Right now the seniors are trying to lead and they all are, you know, are, are expressing themselves in the right times in the right situation. Saeed's trying to be a voice as well. And, and so there you go. It's a veteran group that, that kind of returns and they all offset each other in different areas. But I think over the next couple of weeks when you start having adversity set in, you start playing real games, one or two guys will stand out and that's kind of who will follow. Last year, Saeed made, you guys had the conversation to say, hey, this is your best role. And in a certain element, it was a sacrifice for him. Is there anybody else that's going to have to um, sort of readjust their mindset and then to fit a specific role you want this year? Somebody's going to have to be effective for us coming off the bench. There's no question about that. You need offense off the bench. You need defense off the bench. You need guys that can play multiple positions. Um, I, I think Timmy Falls is a young man that's improved. You know, he improved as much during a season. Is, is any freshman I've ever coached. A lot of it was mental, his approach and understanding what we were doing. And once he picked up on our concepts, he became aggressive and that's when he started making plays. There will be times where I think he'll play well enough that you'll go, oh, how come he doesn't start? And it, <laughs> but that's when you know you have a good team. And I think that there were times like that for Saeed and other guys, right? And I was one of those guys as a sophomore. I think every team should have one or two guys that are competing for a starting position although they might not be out there when the ball goes in the air, chances are a lot of the times they'll be out there when the game ends. As this opener now for this season approaches, how close is the program to the vision that you sort of have had since you took this job? Run right away. We, we've, we've, uh, we've made big strides in, in, in terms of um, our talent, our style of play, our following, our, our community support. We, we've made major strides. I have zero complaints in that regard. Um, but we still have a ways to go. And, and one of the hardest things to, to do is sustain um, growth. And, and you never want to stop growing, right? And so we need to continue to recruit. I, I like our class that's coming in. Um, I, I think maybe, you know, we, we've had some times where we've tried to fill voids and plug holes. Um, and, and sometimes that's not the best thing to do. Sometimes it's best to just ride it out, ride it out and see what you got. We've done a really good job in the fall. Um, and, and so I think with success, recruiting starts to change for a lot of people. And you try to go after guys that you typically would have never gone after. We got to be careful of that and continue to just go after our guys, our kind of guys, to keep doing what we're doing. Um, but I, we're close. We're close. We still got ways to go, though, in quite a few things. You know, facilities are, are growing. We're getting better in that regard, um, and we're starting to compete with you know Mountain West, bottom, bottom end, Pac-12 for players, um, and and playing as well. So we're excited about where we're at and where we're at. Tomorrow night is the basketball 101 event and students in and, and that how big an engine is the student body to just the entire fan base and the environment in 
in the Adam Center when you guys play? They're the most important piece. Um, and, you know, I, I think that I've been a couple places and, and I've played against quite a few pro programs on the road that have had that following, that student following. And I've seen it come and go in a lot of places. And I think that what happens is sometimes we forget how important it is. And, and especially when you want a crowd, a, a home court advantage. Well, that's going to come from the younger base. That's not going to come from your older base, right? And there's times when your gym sounds like a movie theater, right? And it's on the road or at home, and, and I sense it. And when our crowd gets like that, I get them going. Um, but you need the students to keep that going. And so the more students you have, uh, the, the, the better environment, the better atmosphere you're going to have. I want our student body to grow.